What's up YouTube? It is your boy JB and I'm here tonight with the review for the haves and the have nots season 7 episode number 2 titled Fleeting Moments you guys. So without further ado let's go ahead and just jump right into this video. Alright you guys so the episode. It starts up where last week's episode left off you guys remember Candace and Benny were sitting in the living room they were watching the news and then on the news the reporter was talking about the shooting that happened at the Criers residence where three people were shot. So, you know, Benny's like, he hopes that Jim is dead. And I'm like, Benny, you and I agree on that one. We both hope that Jim is dead. And then Candace wonders what happens. And Benny, once again, says, who cares? He got what was coming to him. I'm like, again, Benny, I can't, I can't agree with you anymore on that one. So then Benny tells Candace, like, you know, you can keep that money because, I mean, shit, if he's dead, he can't spend it. And I'm like, again, Benny, you're right. We're agreeing. So she says, no, you know, I want to do the right thing. And he says, um, you know, she needs to go. She says, no, Benny, I can't go. I want to stay for you. He says, she, she says she's doing the right thing for once. And he says, okay, well, if he's dead, then you can you really you really need to go. And, you know, he was like, okay, you know, let's go. Let's go talk to mama. Let's, you know, try to figure out what's going on over there. So then Benny and Candace, Candace do go upstairs to, you know, wake up Hannah. And, you know, they tell Hannah what happened over there. And, you know, she calls Catherine, Catherine's phone and it goes directly to voicemail. And Benny was like, so, you know, what happened? She said, no answer. So he said, she says, well, I'm about to go over there and see what's going on. He says, okay, well, I'll come with you. She says, no, you don't come with me because, you know, of the whole gym shit. And I'm just like, yeah, I mean, if he's dead, what can, what the fuck can Jim do? So, you know, um, Benny says, okay, well, you know, I got a few things that I'm about to do. So he asked Candace once again, he's like, so do you want to go with me and uh, Mitch? She says, no, I'm good. So you guys go along. And I'm just like, I feel like this is a calm before the storm with Candace. I, I, from what, I mean, the whole thing we saw with Candace, Candace has been this bad bitch this whole time. But now she's turning over a new leaf. I'm, I'm wondering if it's going to stick or if, if she's going to revert back to her old ways. And I also did forget to mention Benny asked Candace downstairs, did she do this? Because, you know, this this is something that she would tip. This is like something that she would do. But I'm just like, Candace is nowhere near as sloppy as what Wyatt is. Wyatt is high. Wyatt got caught. Candace wouldn't have got caught. So, you know, no, Candace did not do this. It was that, that high-ass son of theirs. Extremely high. Dumbass high. Let's move on. All right, so let's jump over to David's place. So David and Jeffrey are talking to the cops. The cops are questioning them, asking them, who might want to do this to you? Jeffrey says, my mom. And David says, well, you know, I am a retired judge, so I, I you know, I probably made some enemies along the way. Jeffrey says, um, and also my mom. So then the cops were just asking stuff about Veronica. And, you know, Jeffrey's telling them where she get her nails done, where she get her wigs done, where she lives, where her bedroom is. I'm like, damn, Jeffrey, like, you've gotten some balls against your mama. Like, the bitch just really tried to have you killed. But, you know, hey, I mean, Jeffrey should, I mean, Jeffrey, you really had her if you if you had stabbed her just a little bit lower and got an actual, like, a a, a, a a real sharp jagged knife, bitch could be dead. So then the cops, you know, he says, well, let me go talk to the other people over here. So Jeffrey asks David, like, why can we even turn her in? And Jeff David says to him, like, this is your mother, Jeffrey. You know how she is. She's too smart to get caught by these guys. So he says, so what are you going to do? He says, with, with your mother, you got to outfox the fox. I'm like, that's exactly what you got to do. You got to outsmart Veronica. You got to be one step ahead of Veronica because, I mean, if you're not, she's going to get you. Like, she's going to get you. So then the cop comes back over and he tells them that, wow, two shooters in one night, one here and one at the crier's place. And like, what happened at the criers? He's like, well, three people... Have Three people have been shot. Excuse me, I don't mean a burp. Three people have been shot, and Jeffrey says he did it. And David's like, what are you talking about? He says, well, you know, Wyatt was talking about earlier that he was going to kill his parents. And, he, and David was like, well, did you tell anybody? He says, no, because Wyatt was high, so I didn't think anything of it. I would really listen to someone that is high. I mean, you know, somebody like Wyatt, I would definitely listen to him when he says he's going to kill someone. Really would definitely listen to a nutcase like that one. So then we see Mitch. So Mitch shows up over to, um, you know, Hannah's place to get Benny. So he's talking to Candace. 
he's asking Candace, is she good? She's like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm straight. All is good with me. So then, you know, he's apologizing to her. And she says, it's all good. It, it really is. It's all good. So then he says, you know I love you, right? She says, yeah, I know that. And he says, well, you know, I don't want anyone messing with you. She says, I know that as well. And, you know, he says, well, you know, um, if you do need some, if you need something, if you need, you know, need any help or anything, I'm here. Like, I got people that I can ask favors for. I'm like, oh, okay. You really feeling Candace. But is Candace, is Candace feeling you the same way? Those are the questions that I need answers to. Well, let's move on, you guys. All right, you guys. So then we also see Derek. So Derek is at the crib. He, you know, he got his phone in his hand. He's contemplating calling Hannah. I'm like, wow. So you're really contemplating calling Hannah? Cool. Not really. So he does call Hannah's house. And Candace picks up the phone. And he's, he thinks that it's Hannah. She's like, this is not Hannah. He's like, well, who is this? She's, and then, you know, Candace told him who he was, who she was. And he was like, so how much does your mother tell me about you? She says, not that much. She's, but, she's like, but why don't you tell me more about yourself? He's like, well, I feel like this is a conversation that we should have, you know, face to face with each other. He's like, can I come over there? Well, she says, I agree. He says, well, can I come over there? She says, my mom doesn't want you here. He says, well, can we meet up somewhere? And, you know, she was like, I'll think about it. Like, I, you know, I'll think about it and I'll let you know. But, but you definitely can't come here. So then we also move over to Wyatt's old place and we see Broderick there. So then, you know, he lets in um, his friend, uh, what is his name? Rocky. So, you know, he's asking Rocky about RK. No sign of RK. And, you know, he, you know they're, be, they're safe. They're not going to be deported or anything like that. And then he also tells, Rocky tells uh, Broderick that, you know, they really wanted Candace. And, you know, that the whole, you know, the whole story is out there. And, you know, he's like, huh, really? He's like, yeah, it, you know, it's all out there now. So then he also tells him about the shooting over at the crier's house. So he says, does, you know, do they know anything? He says, no, right now they don't know anything, but they know three people have been shot, but they haven't really, you know, said much. You know, also, before I, I'm, I'm forgetting to mention, you know, Roger think he got this all in a bag with Catherine. Like, Catherine's going to put this place in my name. This, this, and that. This is our big payday. Okay. You fuck with Catherine the wrong way. Just ask Jennifer Salison how that went for her. Oh, that's right. Jennifer Salison is dead, right? But, you know, Roderick's like, I mean, not Roger, but um, Rocky's like, you might want to enjoy this moment while it lasts because the moments are basically fleeting. I'm like, ooh. So then over at the hospital, we see Madison and Keisha. You know, they outside, the they out there at the nurse station. They talking. And Justin is still ringing that damn buzzer. And Keisha's like, you know, you might want to go check on him because, you know, he's, he's going to keep ringing that buzzer. And you know that, right? And he was like, no, nah, I'm not going to go check on him. He's like, well, how about you go do it? So Keisha's like, uh. But then she goes and check on him. And she goes to the room. She's like, can I help you, sir? He says, I'm, where's Madison? She says, he's out there. He says, I want Madison. She's like, oh, fine. So then she goes back to Madison and tells Madison he wants you. Man, was like, no. She's like, you know, he's going to ring that buzzer again until you come. So then Madison does go into, you know, um, Justin's room. And he says, you know, he sees Justin getting dressed. He's like, what are you doing? He says, I'm going home. He says, you haven't been discharged. He says, I'm going home. He's like, okay, where's your guard at? He's like, the guard is gone because I've been, you know, my lawyer called me and told me that I got bailed out. So, again, going home. He's like, can you help me get my clothes? He's like, so Justin got it, not Justin, but Madison got Justin's clothes. He's like, can you help me put them on? I'm like, oh my God, here we go with creepy Justin. Creepy Justin. So Justin puts his pants on and Madison helps him put his shirt on. And then, you know, Justin will turn around and talk about, ooh, do you work out? He was like, sir. He's like, yeah, I know. It's creepy, right? I'm sorry. And he's like, but do you work out? He's like, I'll work out your ass across this floor if you don't leave me the fuck alone. Like, Justin is such a creep. Like, I don't get it. He's a creeper. And Madison told him, like, you're a very good looking guy. But the thing is, you come off as a fucking creep that nobody wants to deal with your ass. Like, you make it hard for anybody to like you. 
if you would just act like a, a normal person, like if you like a guy, if you like a guy, flirt with him, you woo him, but don't be the creep like, do you break out? I like your biceps. Like, don't be that kind of guy. Just be like, you know, I like you. I think you cool. I think you cute. Like, give me your number. Like, can I take you out sometime? Like, you know, outside of my work clothes, I look a lot different. <laughs> oh, God. I, I, had, I had not heard that song in years. That Alicia Keys song. <laughs> That's why I'm laughing, because I thought about that Alicia Keys song from back in 2003 or four. If you guys know that song, just 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 bear with me. But if he just didn't act like a creepy ass dude, maybe he can get more maybe he can get more action than he does. Or not or I'm not gonna say more action than he does. He won't get he won't get the forced action that he's gotten. Cause Justin is just such a creeper. Creeper, 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 creeper. But let's move on, you guys. All right, you guys, so next let's talk about Landon. So Landon is at the bar, and we see Oliver there as well. So Landon goes to sit down with Oliver. He's still pissed off at Oliver for losing his job. And I'm just like, how are you pissed off at Oliver? Oliver did not tell Charles to fire you. You got yourself fired behind Candace. And then he's going to start blaming, you know, he, he blames, he's talking about that whore. He blamed that whore. And I'm like, again... You can't blame Candace either. The only person that you can literally blame for this shit is yourself. Charles told you direct what he wanted you to do. You didn't follow those orders. So Charles said, fuck you, and he fired you. But for you to sit here and try to blame Oliver, Candace, and then you telling Oliver if, you know, he gets the chief of staff position, he'll kill him. I'm like, oh, okay, I'll land in. No one is threatened by you. No one is scared of you. If I'm not mistaken, Candace and Erica got the best of you. But okay. Right. No one is afraid of you. So then we see Veronica. She's at home and she gets a phone call from Celine. And Celine is telling her like, okay, Veronica, I'll meet up with you. And Veronica says, okay, well, you know, come by my house tomorrow. And it's, a, you know, we'll see. We'll see. So then as Veronica pours herself a drink and sits on the couch, a bunch of niggas in black outfit, black, excuse me, y'all, black hoodies, black ski masks just surround her and her place. Like, oh, God, it stinks in here. Like, y'all are all musty as hell. Ugh. So then, you know, the one dude that called her to the hospital last week, she says, he's like, so did you do what I, so did you do what I asked you to do? She's like, you trying to threaten me? You trying to scare me? Like, it ain't working. She says, you know what? I called a funeral home. He says, and made the arrangements. He says, what funeral home? And she told him, it's a cliche name. I forgot what the fuck the name of the, I forgot what it was. I literally forgot the name. And then type it out because I didn't really care that much about it. But now that I think about it, I wish I had typed it up, but whatever. But, you know, she said, and she said, I also set up a college fund for those little bastards. He says, watch it there. Those are my niece and nephew. She says, and they're also bastards now because their father is dead. I'm like, but damn, she just really don't give a fuck. So, you know, he's, he's, he's still, like, threatening her. I'm like, what? Huh? Okay. And she's like, you know, I got all of y'all out of jail, right? I can send all of y'all back, right? He tells her, well, you know, I got a lot of shit on you that I could tell, too. She's like, oh, but you a gangster, right? You don't snitch, do you? He says, nah, I don't do that. But he says, just, I'm just letting you know. And I'm like, again, here's the thing that bothered me with this whole entire scene. So he snapped his fingers for them to leave. You see dudes walking out the front door. You see dudes climbing over the wall by her, behind her pool. And I'm just sitting there thinking to myself, so I'm pretty sure bougie as Ignorant as Veronica lives in a, a a nice, probably gated community, and nobody once noticed these these this group of niggas with ski mask on, black shit on. Like y'all don't think maybe the bitch is getting robbed? Like I, nobody thought to call the cops. I mean, seriously, nobody, not one person. Okay, if you say so, let's move the fuck on. All right, so. Let's move back over to the bar. So Landon goes back to Oliver's table once again, 
tells Oliver to leave, and Oliver actually got up. I'm like, really? So you were sitting here before him, but he gonna come over here talking about this is his table, and you gonna have your way up? I'm like, no. There's a table right there. There's one right there. Oh, there's a big, huge bar right there that you can go sit at, but I'm not getting the fuck up. So, you know, the, the main issue with Landon is he needs to get laid. I'm, and I was like, well, can't help you with that. But I'm like, really? You can't help him with that? I would have swore the way that they were arguing and bickering that Landon and Oliver had fucked in the past. But, you know, maybe, maybe I was wrong. Maybe I was wrong. So then Landon, he calls him Candace. And she was like, so who is this? He said, it's Oliver. She says, goodbye. Boom. So he calls her back. She says, do not call me again. He says, wait, 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 wait. Before you hang up, Candace, I can help you. He, you know, he's talking about, you know, you were you were born to be in the policy. She says, no, I was not. He says, I can clean this up. I can fix this. She's like, why would you do that? He's like, because I want to help you. She says, you're still lying. Oh, I'm landing. He says, okay, I got fired. She says, oh, so I'm a pawn because you want to get your job back. She says, no, I'm not doing it, Landon. Goodbye. He says, I'll take that as a yes. So then we also see that there's this guy sitting at a little table by himself. I'm like, Landon, that dude is straight. You finna get your ass beat up fucking with him. So Landon goes and flirts with him. I'm like, Landon, you're about to get beat up because that man is straight. And the man tells him straight out, he's straight. And he's like, are you curious? No. He says, I'm studying. He's like, you won't even accept, accept and drink from me? He says, no, I'm studying. So then he notices this guy. His name is Scott. And he's kissing this woman. So he takes his phone out and he, he takes a picture. He says, are you taking a picture of me? He says, no. Move this way. So then, you know, Landon goes up to the guy, Scott. And he asks him, so who is this? He says, oh, this is my cousin. He says, oh, so you guys are kissing cousins. Disgusting. So then, you know, he asks him, like, why is he there? Did you did your AG send you here to, you know, spy on um, um, Charles? He says, Charles? No. He says, okay. He says, so what I'm going to need you to do is, I'm going to need you to delete that. And Linda asks him, so why are you here? He says, like you just said, you know, I can't be in D.C. with my wife, my wife and my mistress there. So I brought her here. He says, okay. He says, delete that. He says, no. Keeping it for, you know, insurance. Um, so, you know, he tells him, you know, get out of here. I'm like, really? Who are you, Landon? Okay. So then over at the crier's house, we see Hannah shows up. And, you know, the reporters are trying to ask her if she knows what happened. She says, please get that camera out of my face. So then she goes up to the police. I think she's a police chief. And she asks her what's going on. So as she's going in the house, she sees she sees Wyatt in the car. Uh, the, in the patrol car, handcuffed, Wyatt is still high. And he says, I did it, Hannah. I, sh I did it. I shot her. He sh I shot them. I'm like, oh, God, Wyatt is an idiot. So then Hannah goes into the house. So we see Jim on a stretcher. And, you know, they got one of those, um, what do they call those things? Those ventilation bags. I think that's what they call it, the ventilation bags. You know, when they're trying to, you know, they're pumping. Yeah, I think that's what it is. It's a ventilation bag. He's on the stretcher. So then Hannah goes upstairs. And who's who's up there upstairs? Catherine. And Catherine is alive. And I'm like, wait a minute. How is Catherine alive? Because, again, like we, like I said, last week we saw Catherine face down, ass up in that water. And I was like, okay, make this make sense to me. Because Wyatt shot her, so we thought. But, nope, that's not what even happened. <laughs> Catherine explained to us what happened. So, you know, she asked, um, Hannah asked, not Hannah, but Catherine asked Hannah, did she see Jim? And Hannah says, no, nope, didn't see him. <laughs> she didn't see him. Yeah, if you saw him, you saw him with that bullet hole in his chest. Um, she says, they won't let me see him. I'm just like, why would you want to see that asshole? Oh, God, Jim is just a creep. So then, you know, um, you know, uh, Catherine tells Hannah what all happened and why it shot at them. And she goes a little bit deeper as to what happened with her. So she said that she was under the under the water, but she kept um she kept you know coming back up for air until the police came. I'm like, you kept coming up for air until the police came. But last week when we saw you in a bathtub, 
You weren't moving. You were just like laying still. So when did you come up for air? And why were you coming up for air? Because she said, Wyatt didn't shoot her. Wyatt shot above her. I was like, huh? So if he didn't shoot you, why did you flip around and fall into the bathtub? That makes no sense. When you have, never mind. I am not going to go there at all. <clears throat> so Hannah goes back downstairs and George is downstairs. And George is asking her questions about what kind of, you know, what all happened there. She's like, I don't know. Like, you got to ask them. He's like, well, you know, if I ask them, I'm not going to really get anything. Exactly. Ask them. So then he asked her how is Benny. She says, I mean, he's okay. He's like, why are you asking? He says, oh, because we found a notepad in the study. And it had Benny's name on it with tomorrow's date on it. And it also had 8 million reasons to get this done. Do you know anything about that? And she's like, no. I don't know anything about that. And he says, well, would Benny know? She says, no. Well, I don't think he would, but no. So, you know, um, she goes back upstairs and she asks Catherine if Catherine knows anything. Catherine says, Jim is not going to do anything to Benny. I'm like, you think Jim's not going to do anything to Benny? You think that. So then George comes back upstairs with another cop. And he's asking Catherine, are you okay? She says, yes, I'm okay. He said, did you get shot? She says, no, I didn't get shot. He says, okay, again, did you get shot? She says, no. He says, cuff her. And she's like, for what? He says, you're under, the, under arrest for the murder of Jennifer Stallings. And I'm like, God damn. Finally, I'm like, that because that whole shit was sloppy, to be quite honest with you, Jennifer Stallings. <laughs> Jennifer Stallings. And, you know, um, Catherine told uh, Hannah, call Marty. And that is basically where this week's episode ended, you guys. So be sure to like this video, leave your comments, subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell notification button so you guys don't want to drop anything else. And also share this video. If you guys want to follow me on social media, my Twitter is JB underscore the underscore CEO. My Instagram is JB says what. And my Snapchat is Mr. GB underscore is to you. And I will catch you guys tomorrow for Black Ink Crew Chicago and um, The Oval. I think we got one. I think next. I think next week is the season finale. I think we got one episode before the season finale. I think this is it. I'm not quite sure, but I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace out.